Excellent. Thank you for coming, everybody, to this afternoon's meeting for the Northampton License Commission, Tuesday, January 30th, 4 p.m. This is um, um, a Zoom recorded meeting and present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Commissioners Helen Kahn and Jennifer Ewers. Do we have anybody here for general public comment? Seeing no hands raised, we will jump into agenda item number three. We have an application for a short-term liquor license. This is for the trustees of Forbes Library, 20 West Street on February 24th, 2024, three to 6 p.m. for an art reception. And it is a wine and malt license requested with a, a fee waiver. And do we have Faith here? I am here. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. You wanna let us know about your event? Uh, wine and cheese, and if we're really lucky, cookies. Nice. And chocolate chips, we'll see. <laughs> nice, same. Um, the, the, the exhibit is gonna be awesome, you should all come. Oh, great. Really and who are the artists you saw it on the application? Uh, um, Dora Reyes and Don Carter and Lori Lynn Hoffer. Nice. And they're all really bright and colorful and energetic. Exactly what we're going to need in February. Exactly. Yep. Cool. Um, any questions for Faith from Helen or Jennifer? Nope. No questions. All right. Anything else to add, Faith? No. Okay. It's not. Then we're ready for a motion. Right, I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for the trustees of Forbes Library as uh, along with a fee wa waiver as detailed in item three on the agenda. Second. Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, application for a short-term liquor license for TNC Auto Corporation, DBA, Northampton, Volkswagen at 361 King Street, February 15th from 4 to 7 p.m. The event is a sip and shop Galentine's event with wine and malt being served. And yep. hello. Hello. How are uh, you? So Good. How are you? Thanks. So this is our second sip and shop. We had one last year. So we have over 30 women owned businesses um, doing like pop-up shops, selling, you know, jewelry, candles, hair care, skin care. Um, so we're looking just to serve little samples of beer and wine um, to the people coming and shopping. Great. Um, and the same setup as when you usually have events at the yep. dealership? Yeah, we're just going to do the alcohol out of Northampton Volkswagen, and then we'll set up the other vendors throughout the both dealerships. But just the alcohol will be at Northampton Volkswagen. Okay. Um, any questions from Helen or Jennifer? I don't have any questions, now. No, no questions. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for TNC Auto Corp as detailed in item four on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you. And I can hop off, right? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Have yeah. a good night. Yeah, you too. Bye. Item number five, we have a public hearing on an application for an amendment to an existing restaurant license from wine and malt to all alcohol pursuant to chapter 76 of the Acts of 2023. This is for Teapot Restaurant Incorporated at 116 Main Street. This is an amendment from wine and malt to all alcohol. And do we have anyone here from Teapot? It's possible that the iPhone or the phone number is. Um... Okay. I could ask them to unmute and doesn't seem to be working. Okay, well, we will move on and if they appear, we can jump back. 
Item number six, we have a public hearing on an application for a change of classification on a seasonal wine and malt restaurant license for Sub Rosa LLC, 33 West Street, units A and B. Change of classification from yeah. season- Hello? Oh, hello. I'm Tipa. How are you? Good, good, but I have a problem with something with this, you know? Oh, sure, no problem. Okay. Okay, we'll jump back to you. I'm glad you were able to get on so quickly. Now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, great. So um, I'm going to make a motion then to open the public hearing on your application. Second. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone here to speak to this specific item as public comment? Seeing nobody, we can jump into it. Can you just state your name for the record? We haven't met before, I don't think. Uh, my name is Chi Chia. Last name W O U Wu. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Um, so you are the recipient of one of the, the Chapter 76 over quota licenses. Yes. And all of your documents have been submitted. Um, did you have anything that you wanted to share with us about your plans for the license? Oh, I hope a license can uh, boost my business and uh, keep restaurant can open, you know. Get yeah. more business now is very tough. So some yeah. customer ask for Ha drink like cocktail, so we can keep the coming. So, yeah. Yep. Well, I'm glad we were um able to get these over. Or the city was able to get the over quota. Yeah, license. we're waiting uh, 25 years. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I've seen you come through a few different lotteries in the past. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We missed the lottery. You know? Yeah. Um, Jennifer and Helen, do either of you have any questions or comments? No, just congratulations. No. Thank you. Hopefully this will really help your restaurant. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No questions. I will make Thank a motion you. to close the public hearing so we can have a discussion and a vote. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Okay. Um, everything's submitted. They've been waiting a long time for this. I have no, I have no issues with approving this. Thank you very much. Okay, well, you still got to vote you. on it. Hold on. The big oh, okay. happened. <laughs> um, is there anything that either of you want to add to that before a motion, assuming you're in agreement? I, I think we're ready to make the motion. Okay. All right, have at it. All right, I'll make a motion uh, to approve the application for an amendment to an existing restaurant license from wine and malt to all alcohol pursuant to chapter 76 of the acts of 2023 for teapot restaurant Inc on 116 main street. Second. Uh, Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Great. You're all set. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yes. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Good. Okay, back to item number six, which I'll reread. The public hearing on an application for a change of classification on a seasonal wine and malt restaurant license for Sub Rosa LLC, 33 West Street, Units A and B, change of classification from seasonal to annual. And I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Is anyone here for public comment on this, this issue? Seeing none. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you guys? Pretty good. How are you? Good. So tell us your, your thoughts on making this change before opening ish. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure thing. Um, well, there, the reason we're here tonight is because, well, for a number of reasons. Um, the first of which is we, as you know, we were approved for the seasonal license back in December and we had our inspection with the ABCC inspector who encouraged us to apply for the conversion now, um, which we were really happy and encouraged to hear her suggest that to us because one of the Sabrosa is we created Sabrosa out of both a, a heartfelt desire to share our farm flowers with the community in a beautiful space and to also support and buoy the business through what are pretty scary financial months for the farm. Um, the winter months, Kel and I don't pay ourselves because we have a commitment to keep our staff employed year round. 
And so Sabrosa has, we created Sabrosa because we know that we'll be really good at hosting the community and creating this beautiful space. And we also hope that we can create a, a unique and dynamic business model that is a sustainable one for our, for our lives. <laughs> so yeah, the, the exact months in which the seasonal license limits our ability to, to pour would is the exact months in which we don't have income from the farm. So right. we're hoping to bridge that gap. Yeah. And probably the exact months when the farm is the busiest is when you would have the seasonal license and then. Yes. The, yeah. 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 That's exactly that's right. And I feel like I, I'm just going to name that. I, I think Kel and I are both a little nervous <laughs> because, <laughs> because we are, we're not restaurateurs. Um, we're farmers who have a vision and we're pouring all of our personal resources into Sabrosa. And so the need, like, unfortunately, Kel has been saying this a lot over the last few months that people will pay a lot more for a nice botanical cocktail than they will for a bouquet of our really hard, hard won flowers. And that's just the reality of the world that we live in. Um, so the, we're really leaning on our ability to pour as a way to maintain some income cash flow for uh, for ourselves and the businesses while bringing visibility to the thing that's the heart of it all yeah 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 makes sense um helen and jennifer any comments questions um when are you planning to open what uh, what's your projection for that our our goal was valentine's day because we all know that people love that holiday and the floristry world but um we're still waiting on different trades to finish up their work and which will then let us get our health inspection. And so we're, I thought everything was going to be sort of complete around this time by the time we met with you, but we're probably a couple of weeks away from health inspection, hopefully a week or two. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So then we're hoping for March 1st mm -hmm. or around there. Yeah. I need to be reminded when the seasonal license starts. What What's the date that the seasonal? It's April 1st through January 15th. April 1st through January 15th. Right. So it's about two and a half, two and a half, three and a half, two and a half months that aren't, that can't be used. Mm -hmm. Um. So now, I mean, just to sort of break it down, what we're talking about is um, converting it to an annual to cover March, right? Uh, just so I'm clear, right? Yeah. Well, about now. For the immediate, yes, for this immediate um, year. And part of the, part of the, re I mean, there's, yeah. So for, for March now until we open in April and then. For as soon as we open, yeah, we would have our full offerings available. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, everyone's being very quiet, so I'll just keep talking. Um, <laughs> I see your brain working. <laughs> Is that why awesome. everyone's waiting for me? <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm just because I know I know that you've been told that it's it's sort of unprecedented i guess um for the, for this to happen that before a business even opens that it's converted to an annual without there being sort of a test run with the seasonal license and so i absolutely understand um your concerns and wanting to like hit the ground running um yeah. i'm just laying it out there that yeah, that, yeah. that you know just the information out there that so now we're talking about it covering a month i know every week counts in a business, especially when you've been pouring all your resources into it. But I just want to point that out, that there is, that if we were to say, no, that you can't convert it, then it would mean that at least April 1st, it starts, and then you can apply, unless I'm saying something wrong, and then you can apply for the annual for the following year. So, so you wouldn't be left out in the cold, you know, if everything goes well with this current license. But so I'm just throwing that information out there, I guess, for discussion with the um, other folks on the commission. Um, 
you know, so I guess there's just that balance of like, is it, is it, you know, is there a concern with starting a new precedent? Um, knowing of course, that if there are any violations, we'll be on it like that, whether it's a seasonal or an annual. Yeah. So there's also that perspective. Totally. I think if, if I may speak to that, sure. unless someone else wants to speak, um, Obviously, we know that the language in the town laws are it's somewhat ambiguous. It doesn't give a, a, a number of days or weeks or months for responsible use, um, which is one of the reasons why I think we were encouraged to be here tonight. Um, and in terms of responsible use, I think I can speak to my personal history as a bar and restaurant manager in Northampton. Um, I have like over 15 years of bar and restaurant management experience. I know it doesn't apply specifically to this seasonal license that we've been granted, but I do have a lot of history in this industry before I became a farmer. <laughs> um, and I know this is less quantitative, um, but I think Kel and I really pride ourselves in our great reputation in this community um, as respectful, generous, kind business owners. So I hope that means something. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, the the kind of atmosphere that we aspire to create is is pretty unique. And, you know, it's just, um, yeah. I mean, as far as like our hours of operation and things like that go, I think, the way in which we're trying to move through this process, which has proven to be um, maybe a lot more complicated than we even anticipated is like doing everything right, you mm -hmm. know? And so we just wanna, so we're sort of continuing in that in that trajectory, yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you add again, so it was the inspector from the ABCC who, who encouraged you to, to yeah. apply for it? Yeah, she said she didn't really do seasonal licenses and didn't, you know, and she was like, I think there's no reason why I shouldn't go for it. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's interesting to hear. So, okay. Jennifer, do you have anything? It was just interesting that we are here to enforce the ABCC, you know, rules and regulations, and then it's their inspector, you know, encouraging us to do something a little unprecedented. But I am encouraged by hearing about Rebecca's experience. So I do feel um, that that experience counts and that 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 matters. So I know it's unprecedented, but given the timeline, it, it certainly makes sense for, for this to help your business. And to be, you know, to offer more context, like, we met with Smith, we explained the change, you know, they're all, they're all on board. So we've, you know, we've tried to go through as much of the due diligence that we have to do to make sure that everybody knows what's happening, that there's transparency throughout the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Does anybody have anything else before we close the hearing? We're ready? Yep. Then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for discussion. Uh, N Natasha? Yes. Alan? Yes. Uh, Jennifer? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so we have, you both Jennifer and Helen, you both mentioned that we haven't done this before, issued a um, year round an annual wine and malt immediately. I've been thinking of it in terms or trying to think of it in a little bit of a different way, um, shifting from seeing how somebody performs as a license holder with the regulations and everything else to thinking about the seasonal license in terms of it's almost always used for places that are open seasonally. I mean, there's some places that have do have a seasonal license um, that has been converted. Sorry, there's a cat. Um, oops. But, you know, I think about Scotty's. They've got a seasonal license because they're only open seasonally. They're not open during those dead months in the winter. Um, so I feel less concerned about doing this. Um, and also, like you said, Helen, there's 
you know, if any issues arise in performance with the license or, um, you know, anything, we, we deal with it when that happens. And that wouldn't, that would be the same, no matter what type of license it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I would be inclined to, to support this. Hmm. Any thoughts, Jennifer? I mean, I can, yeah, I can, I can see the advantage of, of converting to an annual. I totally get that. So. Sure. And every day matters, you know, like you mentioned. So I see the significance of being able to pour, you know, everything on three, one versus four fifteen. So um, I'm comfortable with allowing, you know, and they're not advertising. I know they're not out for last call. It's not a rowdy. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. Right. And then they're branding the business sort of straight out of the gate as opposed to having exactly. to have some sort of delay. Yep. Okay. Then mm -hmm. we ready for a motion on it? Sure. I'll go unless you want to go, Jennifer. Oh, no. Okay. I'll make a motion <laughs> to approve the application for a change of classification and on, on a seasonal wine and malt restaurant license to an annual license for Sub Rosa LLC at 33 West Street, units A and B. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Good Thank luck with most of your process. Yeah, the door is open so you can use that license. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. We'll see you soon. All right. All right. I'm going to alter the um, order of the next agenda items. And I'm going to bump agenda item number nine up. And we do have John here. Um, so this is for an application for an amendment to existing entertainment license held by Gombo Oyster Bar, LLC from Fridays between 9 and 12.30 a.m. to Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. and adding amplification. And, hi, John. Are you with us? He is unmuted. Yeah. Wonder if it was caught off guard by the switch. By the switch. The agenda item. John, can you hear us? All right. Well, we'll just not do that right now. Then we'll go back to item seven. We have a continuation of a public hearing on an application for a transfer of an annual all alcohol restaurant license and transfer of a common victor license and entertainment license. This is a transfer from Iron Horse Ventures Incorporated DBA Iron Horse Music Hall transferring to the Parlor Room Incorporated DBA The Iron Horse 2022 Center Street with a proposed manager of record being Chris Freeman. I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Uh, second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Okay. Is there anyone here for public comment on this particular item? Seeing nobody, we'll get right into it. And do we have Eric here? Yes. Hello. Hey, Eric. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, Randy and Chris are here as well. Thank you for coming. Um, Eric, can we have an update on how things are going? Um, uh, unfortunately, you know, we don't have the certificate as um, as was discussed to, to be provided by this meeting. So, you know, we've been in conversation uh, with Chris and we're obviously looking forward to moving this forward, allowing the venue to for our previous meeting, if it wasn't provided, finding another solution to be able to allow them to continue with their process. Okay. Um, and there's no end, there's a, it's a no end in sight for getting the certificate. There's no. As I mentioned at the last meeting, it was like 23 or 24 business days and things are still being worked on. So not based if their time frame is as discussed with uh, with both Chris and Randy and most recently Chris if their time frame is 
um, as discussed, then it's just not going to happen. Okay. Um, Chris and or Randy, can you, I know at our last meeting, you talked about your projected opening date, or at least when you, when you hope to start having music. So I'd like to know if that timeline is still what you're shooting for and how, how this delay in getting this crucial certificate to transfer the license has impacted your process. Right. So the, um, the plan is to be open for back porch weekend, uh, yep. in, in March. Um, that's March 15th through 17th. And then we'll be closing again after that to finish renovations, uh, and be reopening permanently on May 1st. Um, you know, this delay, it, uh, I think it's pretty clear that we're not going to be able to, uh, serve any alcohol during the back porch weekend, which was our, our we were hoping that we would be able to, but, um, since we, so, so anyway, that, that is one way that it's impacted it, which is fine. You know, it's just one weekend, but, um, obviously it's imperative that we have our, whatever the permanent solution is going to be, it has to be in place by, by May 1st, when we're, when we are actually open. Um, so I think that, uh, the best course for us is to just pursue whatever gives us clarity at this point of like making sure that we can get an application for whatever is available to us uh, into the ABCC um, as soon as possible. Okay. Annie, I have a, a clarifying question if you have an answer. So could you remind me, let's say we had the appropriate certificate today, we approve the transfer of this license. What is the projected time period between today and um, having it approved by the ABCC. There's there's really no telling. Um, it could be a month. It could be longer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, Randy, did you have anything that you wanted to add? No. No. I think Chris summarized it very very well. And Helen and Jennifer. Yeah, I don't know if I have anything to add at this point. I mean, there's, you know, can't be a transfer without this certificate. So um, obviously we'll have to approach this from another direction. And then it sounds like there's probably been discussions um, amongst, um, you know, Iron Horse Ventures and um, amongst you all about what it means if there's not um, a license that's part of this this deal. But obviously that's outside yeah. of our realm, but I'm sure- right. We feel confident that we, we're in, everybody's been right. in good faith so far and in, in okay. moving, moving forward. Right now. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately I don't have anything to add. I mean, this is just the same old, um, yeah, I don't have any new questions or just sorry that we're here again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm, I'm pleased, Chris, to hear you hear that you've all been operating in good faith. Um, I think our role at this point is to figure out how to expedite things because there's the huge unknown on the other end of the time that it takes the ABCC to process stuff. Right. So, right. so our, our, discussion as commissioners is I would like to have be sort of grounded in that like how how can we problem solve around that piece what can we do to try and um have a little bit more of a known expectation right that's okay. our hope too yeah okay great then I think we're ready to close the public hearing unless Eric Randy or Chris or the commissioners have anything else to add, okay. Then I will make a motion to close the public hearing for commissioner discussion. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jeff? Yes. Okay, so we have 
we have three things um, that we are either approving or denying each individually. We have the transfer of uh, the common victualler license and the entertainment license. Those are two easy things that that we can accomplish today just to take off of the um, the list. We cannot approve a transfer of this license because of the lack of the DOR certificate. Our options there, as I see them, and I'm, I'm hoping for your input as well and hear, hear what other options you might see here, but we either deny the transfer or we issue another continuation for this piece of the license, which my concern with that is the not so much when the certificate from the DOR is coming, but now because of the dates and how close we're getting to May is how um, how long it's gonna take the ABCC to approve the transfer. One option that we do have is to, if we deny this transfer is to, um, when we get down to agenda item 11, which is discussing the issuance of the remaining three licenses, is to talk about issuing one of those licenses to the parlor room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so yeah, I would be for denying the transfer. Uh, obviously, there's nothing to be transferred. It's my impression that I don't even know if any work has been done since our last meeting on it. But um, putting that aside, um, yeah, to make another continuation at this point is jeopardizing, um, you know, what's going on with the, the parlor room and with the iron horse. So, um, so yeah, I would, I would opt for denying this transfer and then having that discussion at item 11 about okay. using one of those licenses to expedite the whole process, which I wish we could have done months ago. Right. Um, what are your thoughts, Jennifer? Will we be able to, um, I mean, anticipating that we were to approve an item number 11, a new license? I mean, what's the ABCC's turnaround time there? I mean, is that going to get us the same sort of unknown that a, a transfer process is? It's very, the, a new license and a transfer are very similar. Um, they require almost identical paperwork and the same amount of um investigation goes into both trans both applications so and given agenda item number 11 annie would we we could discuss and vote on how to deal with those three licenses and one of the votes if we choose to could be to give one of those licenses to the parlor room meaning they could hit the ground running tomorrow with this process right they would have to they would have to um, complete a different application. It's all pretty much the same paperwork that they've already submitted. Uh, but they'd have to submit an, a new license application as opposed to a transfer. Okay, but we wouldn't need to have a special meeting. They could just, they could literally start this tomorrow. Um, they could start gathering the paperwork, but they'd have to come back to the commission. Like we, there'd have to be a legal notice and a butters notices that process would have to start over okay so so then they would come to the february meeting okay so i would be um at this point i'm in favor of expediting going the fastest route mm -hmm. to getting them licensed and um I think for the purposes of this agenda item, that means denying the transfer of this license. I agree. Okay. Um, are we in agreement that we would approve a transfer for a common victualler and the entertainment license? <laughs> <laughs> and there's no outstanding paperwork on that. I can't right. but there is. That's pretty simple. Okay. Yeah. Should it be done as one motion or is this three separate motions or two motions? I think it's two. Or Motion to deny and then motion to approve. Yeah, I would do two. Okay. If and Jennifer, are you, are you, do you have anything to add to that? I don't, I think I would just ask Annie one last time for reassurance that, um, that we don't foresee any problems with the parlor room and a new application. I, I just don't want to set someone up to fail. I mean, as long as we think I mean, if the paperwork in the process is similar, 
um, and we've been pushing for a transfer, we should be okay. Yeah, I don't. File a yeah, I don't foresee any issues. Chris and Randy have always been on it with the paperwork, so I don't, I don't see any issues. Okay, thank you. I just, I just want to make sure we're not. Yeah, we don't want to set anyone up to fail. So. Yep. No, that's valid. Okay, I think we can do this. All right. Here we go. I'm going to make a motion to deny the transfer of an annual all alcohol restaurant license from Iron Horse Ventures, Inc., DBA, Iron Horse Musical Hall to the Parlor Room, Inc., DBA, the Iron Horse, 20 to 22 Center Street. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the transfer of a common victualler license and entertainment license from Iron Horse Ventures to the parlor room as detailed in item seven on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, thanks everybody. Moving on to agenda number eight, we have a continuation of a public hearing on an application for a transfer and change of location on an annual all alcohol restaurant license, transferring from 2123 Center Street, LLC, DBA, Center Street Cafe, the basement, 21 Center Street, transferring to Gombo Oyster Bar, LLC, 159 Main Street, and the proposed manager of record will be John Piscor. I make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Second. Oh. Um, Helen's got it. Yes. Uh, Helen. Yeah. <laughs> and Jennifer. Yes. Is there anyone here for public comment on this agenda item? I think you guys can hear me now. Yeah, we can hear you now. Just give me one second. Make sure nobody's here for public comment, and nobody is. Hi, John. How are you? Hey, good. I apologize. I got knocked off earlier. No worries. No worries. Um. Eric, is, is it the same update on? It is, yes. Okay, great. Um, John, do you have anything that you would like to add? I know you have your, your wine and malt license and your cordial license, and um, you, of course, are hoping to eliminate both with an all-alcohol license. Yeah. Um, I've kind of, I was anticipating a ruling from last meeting uh, only because, like I've spoken to Eric, uh, you know, the cash that we were sitting on waiting to purchase his license in the summertime is not the same as it is in the wintertime. So obviously it puts a burden on us. Um, but, you know, it obviously comes down to the ruling of the commission. Um, it seems like the license would, would have been granted potentially to the parlor room. Um, so if that was the ruling, we'd be happy with that as well. So um that's about it okay um do helen or jennifer have any questions comments for either eric or john and john i assume you and eric have discussed the fact that there won't be a transfer of a license and you've figured out in terms of whatever you had negotiated before that as of right now i hadn't spoken with eric um probably one or two meetings ago. I, I don't remember the last time we uh, communicated on the matter. Okay. Tony, the trans, the, 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 it's just the trans, the renumeration is just the transfer. There's no business involved in it. Okay. It was just a change of location. Okay. As long as no one is out any money um, or as long as Gombo isn't out any money. So, okay. Jennifer, any any thoughts from you before I close the hearing? No, no questions. Okay, then I will make a motion to close the public hearing for commissioner discussion. Second. Natasha. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. So this one, we just have the one item. We don't um, have the common vic or the entertainment. It's just the license and the change of location. 
and same options apply as as sat for the iron horse, either continue this or deny the transfer and and try and move on. So I would John, say, yeah, go ahead and deny. There's no, there's no use in continuing at this okay. point. Jennifer, any thoughts, comments? No, no. All right. Yep. It's two months. It's just, you know, our deadline originally, I think, was September. And so this would yep. have all been dealt with then. But we've been strung along and here we are. So I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to deny the transfer and change of location on an annual all alcohol restaurant license um, from 21 to 23 Center Street to Gumbo Oyster Bar, as detailed in item eight on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. So, Annie, if it's okay with you, I'm going to do 10 in, in front of nine because it just makes more sense to segue right into discussing the um, discuss the cancellation of licenses. Perfect. Okay. So item number 10 is the cancellation of the licenses held by the Iron Horse Ventures Incorporated, 2123 Center Street, LLC, and Eric Schuer in accordance with the executed settlement agreement dated May 15th, 2023. Um, so we have this agenda item on the, um, this item on the agenda today to, in the event that we possibly would have denied the transfer of the other licenses, which we have done. So at this point, Annie, do we have options for those licenses other than to cancel them? Um, no, cause they can't go anywhere. Yep. Um, and they can't stay where they're at because of the agreement. Yep. They can't right. go anywhere because there's because the paperwork isn't there. Okay. okay. All right. So is there a discussion or just a motion? I mean, do we need a discussion? I don't think that we need a discussion, but if there's comment, certainly I would want to um, give you guys the opportunity to speak okay. if you have thoughts on it. No, I mean, I think at this point, it's just housekeeping that, you know, we need to cancel them because they're not going anywhere. And they're not being used, obviously. Jennifer, did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, I, I don't separately from item number 11. Okay. Then I think we're ready for a motion. All right, I'll make a motion to cancel the licenses as detailed in item 10 on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Kellen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Item 11, discussion and vote to determine the means of issuance of the remaining three all alcohol liquor licenses in accordance with chapter 76 of the acts of 2023. Um, so, Natasha, do are we just to remind you that we did skip over nine? Yeah, I think I'd yeah. rather tie up the license conversation before we go to the entertainment. If John's okay with sticking around for that, um, so we have the three over quota licenses, and um, we have the authority to issue them however we want to. In the past, we've always done a lottery. Um, with the exception of this batch of over quota previous uh, lottery applicants who, who were not successful were granted those licenses, which was great. Um, but that leaves us the three to utilize. And while it would have been wonderful to have a transfer of licenses happen seamlessly, and then we have these additional licenses to use towards economic development for the city of Northampton, for new businesses, to you know upgrades for existing folks, um, you know, I think 
the best use of them is to take two of them and give one to the parlor room and one to Gombo. Um, so I have a similar but different proposal, which is that, and it may sound hard, but um, that we that one of them goes to the Iron Horse and that two of them are left for lottery only because, although I do feel for John and for Gombo for having entered into negotiations with Eric Sewer, um, I don't know that that puts Gombo at the sort of top of the list. I know that there are other restaurants in the city who are interested in these licenses. Mm -hmm. And just because they didn't make, I'll try not to put a value judgment on it, but uh, make a decision to enter into negotiations, I don't know that they should necessarily be penalized from having that same opportunity um, to have access to those licenses. Mm -hmm. And some of these restaurants uh, have been in business longer than Gombo has been. So mm -hmm. that's, I guess, sort of my counter proposal to what, what we should do with those licenses. Um, oh, go ahead, Jennifer. Well, I was, it's just uncomfortable to have different rules, different um, outcomes for different people. I mean, I, it doesn't seem fair to make the accommodation, you know, with one Eric Scher negotiation and not with the other. Um, I'm just a little uncomfortable at applying sort of one set of rules to one party and another set to another party. Although I, I fully agree with what Helen's saying. I do know the history and I, I do know the folks who are on the lottery list again and again. And I do understand folks have been waiting a long time. So my rationale for that is that the um, the the deal with the Iron Horse and the Parlor Room was a full package. That included a license as part of all of it, of, as part of running the business. And that business had much less chance of being successful without this liquor license included in it. Eric fell down on his side of it and, and put them in this bind, which we can help solve. Um, whereas with Gombo, it was 100%, it was just the, the liquor license. Um, which I guess any restaurant was at liberty to enter into these negotiations, but it's, you know, unfortunately when John did that, he was taking a risk that he would be essentially paying a certain amount of money to, to guarantee access to this license. And unfortunately it backfired um, and, and he didn't get that license. So I don't know, in my, in my mind, it seems like a, a different, uh, it's it seems it seems different to me the the what was going on with the iron horse in the parlor room um versus just getting it this liquor license and i do, you know and sort of the counterpoint to it doesn't seem fair to do this with one license and or one business and not the other is that i can see other restaurants in the area making the counterpoint that, well, it doesn't seem fair that just because he entered into these negotiations, he should automatically be guaranteed a license. Having said all this, I mean, obviously I know we're all of the opinion that we would like to just issue licenses to any restaurant that wants it and we're not there yet. And I don't know why. Um, it seems just awful that we have to have this discussion over and over again. But um, but anyway, the, the, it is what it is. And we do have this limited amount of licenses. So um, anyway, so so that's my reasoning behind it. That's a, in my mind, it's it's a different, um, it, it's sort of a different business package, I guess. I completely see that point of view. I think. Um, my initial gut response to this issue of not being able to transfer the licenses was how can we clean up this mess, right? How do we make this right? Um, but do in doing that, trying to do a right sort of creates also a wrong 
based on on your perspective, Helen. Mm -hmm. um, that you know that there are other restaurants. It was not part of the package initially. It was it was a a, a la carte sort of item. Doesn't make it any easier to decide what to do. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. No, I mean, I wish we weren't in this situation for multiple reasons. I wish yeah. that we could, as I said, just issue it to any restaurant who applies and puts in the correct paperwork and gets approved by the ABCC. Why not? Um, but we're not there. And also that the transfer didn't happen. Um, you know, I think I know we're all frustrated by that, that that right. would have solved all of this. And then there would have been three licenses out there for for other businesses and restaurants. Um, I am, based on what Helen has said, I am leaning more towards Helen's perspective on this. Um, but I would like to hear more thoughts on your perspective, Jennifer, if you have more to add to that. I, I'm now thinking about precedent and um, sort of the precedent that this sets. Um, I, I don't feel that it's our position to determine if um, if negotiations were made in good faith or not, right? We talk a lot about the good faith, the good faith, and that in the future, you know, I don't think that's something that, that we're here to consider, and that's, that's sort of what I'm hearing, that there's a sort of a slippery slope in that regard. Um, but I'd like to know what Natasha thinks in terms of setting forward that precedent of, of treating the parlor room and the iron horse, you know, uh, differently because it was part of a, a more uh, uh, extensive package versus an a la carte negotiation. I mean, I think if we were to, I think there is good reason to treat the iron horse and the parlor room differently, simply from a standpoint of, dead space downtown economic and, development and economic development and bringing life back to something that is critical for northampton it's what northampton was known for um it 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 remaining dark has a negative impact on gombo and every other restaurant downtown um so i think it's almost it's hard because we're we're these are apples and oranges right like they're not we're, they're not equal things so it's um the easy answer is to treat them as if they're equal but they aren't equal. I think so. That's that is where um, where I'm coming from, and I and in you know it's in terms of setting a precedence. I sure as heck hope we don't ever have to deal with this <laughs> again. <laughs> this type of issue, you know, um, and I I think it is in issuing one of these licenses to the Iron Horse. The goal is to uh, give them the ability to get going on this application because the chances of it getting approved fast are gonna are much uh, clearer than if we wait, continue to wait for a DOR certificate. Um, so I, I feel completely confident in, in, in throwing my support behind issuing one of these licenses to them. Because we're talking about two different entities, you know, John is, and this is not to say that is easy. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to imply that, um, having a wine and malt and a cordial license is the same as having an all alcohol. I understand that it's not, I understand the margins, the bottom line, all of that, what the customers, you know, seek. Um, but he does have those. Right. And as do, I think any, I mean, I don't know what restaurants are left who would enter into a lottery. Um, I'm sure there's a couple, but I mean, honestly, wouldn't it be ideal <laughs> if we go forward with this and there's there's two licenses and two restaurants enter into the lottery? I mean, that, that's yes. honestly what I'm hoping, but I'm just concerned about just saying you uh, got screwed, for lack of a better word, and so here's your license, um, you know, because, and sort of penalizing other restaurants for not um, entering into that tenuous negotiation with Mr. Seward. Um, but yeah, I would, uh, that would be great. 
I hope just two restaurants are involved in the lottery and then we're all set. But, you know, obviously we, I don't have a crystal ball on that either. Well, thank you, Natasha, for uh, acknowledging that they are apples to, to oranges, that it's not an equal comparison. I'm sure from John's perspective, he does feel like he's in an equal yeah. sort of mess. Um, yeah. But I, I'm I'm seeing Helen's side that there is a differentiation. I I understand. And you know what is what is our. Um... What is our our mission? You know, what is our what opportunities do we have with these licenses? And I, I continue to come back to the opportunity for economic development, which is was the spirit in which these over quota license were licenses were sought and granted. And in the past, um, you know, because the over quotas is, is you know, I, I don't remember when the first batch was issued, but I think Jennifer, you were on the commission when we had to take one back from a business that had closed when Sylvester's closed. Right. We followed the letter of um, the legislation on that grounded in a basis of economic development and grounded in the spirit of, of what those over quota licenses were meant to, um, how they were meant to help. Right. It's not an easy decision. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's unpleasant yeah. and you know we're restricted by the number of licenses the state gives us and we're restricted by a lot of the um not restricted but we're sort of there's just a lot of fraught energy around this particular conversation with with these particular licenses of eric so yeah and i want to make it clear that obviously there's nothing personal and it's not about which restaurant it was you know so i you know i'm setting all that aside it's well, and I commend you for for sharing this perspective because that's why we have these discussions and we have to we have to talk it out. So I appreciate that. Right. So do I. Thank you. Um, so based on this discussion, I would I would um I would vote with Helen on this or a motion to go forward. Yep, I feel the same way. Okay. Um, also, before I make a motion, it sounds like um, just want to voice my frustration again that because of the delay of these transfers, I mean, it's not only impacted the Iron Horse and it's not only impacted Gombo, but it's also impacted these other restaurants. We would have had, you know, these three licenses and we would have done this lottery a lot sooner. So it's, you know, the ripple effects are large. Um, anyway, that being said, um, let me see. I'll attempt a motion. And if I do it incorrectly, you guys can uh, <laughs> tell me to redo it. Um, so I will make a motion to issue one of the all alcohol liquor licenses um, obtained in accordance with Chapter 76 of the Acts of 2023 to, uh, sorry, it's to the Parlor Room, Inc., DBA the Iron Horse at 20 to 22 Center Street and to retain the other two licenses for a lottery. Is that, I don't know if I need to say more on that. <laughs> for, um, or do I do this? I don't know that we want to, I, I would should I just do that broad and retain yeah. the other two licenses to be determined for issuance to be determined at a future date. Yes, what she said. Sorry, I'm looking at Annie. <laughs> um, to, unless now, does I, Annie have anything? Or should I do this as two separate motions? Um, yeah. Uh, I think they should be two separate motions. Okay. And is it enough to say to retain the other... Or... Okay, so motion number one. So I'll make a motion. <laughs> so strike the previous. So I'll make a motion um, to issue one of the all alcohol liquor licenses obtained in accordance with Chapter 76 of the Acts of 2023 directly to um, the Parlor Room, Inc., DBA, the Iron Horse at 20 to 22 Center Street. Second. Natasha. Yes. Helen? 
Yes. Hey, Jennifer. Yes. So are the other two, are you deciding now to, to issue them via lottery? I know that's what our discussion has been, but do we now need to have a discussion about that? My preference would be to leave that open. Okay. My only hesitancy with hesitating on that is then we're just putting it out further and further for these other. Oh, I think I know why. <laughs> I know why you might be hesitating. Ah. I don't even want to say the words. <laughs> um, I mean, unless we should be fully transparent about why that I mean, is. Yeah, I'm thinking about the Calvin. I'm thinking yeah. about the, the, the folks who are in conversation for the Calvin would require a license to come to the city. Yeah, and in February, will we be in the same situation? Right. Lord. You can table the the, the other, the last two. Yeah. I mean, should we make the motion to leave them open or should we just table it and not make any motion on the last two? And We can just leave it. And then for the February meeting, I can add the same agenda item and it'll just be two licenses. Okay. I think so. I okay, think and then hopefully there'll be an update um, where that's concerned, and perhaps um, a certificate from the DOR will be available at that time, and the timing will work out better for for all parties in that regard. Well, the Calvin is different. That's not well. There, we do need a DOR certificate for that one, but it's also the whole package. Like, there's not even a transfer. The deadline's tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, then we just won't vote on the other two until February when we have more information. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. That was um, a not easy but thorough conversation about that. I appreciate it. Um, then now we're gonna hop back to the remaining item, which is the application for an amendment to existing entertainment license held by Gombo Oyster Bar, LLC. This is from Fridays between 9 p.m. and 12.30 a.m. to Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. and adding amplification. And John, you're still here, yes? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I have a couple questions about your application for the entertainment. Um, do you plan to, are you hoping to have music outside or did you... So I think that was, we should scrap that because okay. in my thought process is that, you know, we're not here. We obviously wouldn't have it past the noise, noise ordinance. Right. And, um, you know, just being outside under amplification doesn't make any sense. Yep. Also, um, you know, the, the reality of the tr the change is that I was following the rule of the law. So I realized the yep. old license had only had Friday night on it. And, you know, we obviously want to be able to have music for our guests uh, yep. at any given time. Um, obviously, you know, our restaurant's intimate, so, um, you know, it's not going to be like a rager <laughs> per se. Um, right. we do have some music coming up for Mardi Gras. We were, we were hoping to do it on, on some Saturday nights too, but it, right now it says Friday. So, um, okay. we'll wait and do, do a diligence this way. So, um, that was a great piece in the Gazette about the Mardi Gras music. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, so for amplification, we've had, amplification can be tricky as the other commissioners can tell you. Um, there are two other locations downtown who over the years when they have been approved, we got their approval for their entertainment and had amplification. It has been a little bit of a shock to the system of the residential neighbors that abut the establishments. And those other two um spots in town have dealt with it, but it it could it was a little painful for them at times. So have you done any um any sound um mitigation in the restaurant for the music that you currently do have? Or have you had yeah. any complaints from neighbors? Uh, we haven't we we haven't so far, but we only we only had music on New Year's Eve and okay. uh, 
as far as what I, my understanding, I'm, again, I'm a restaurateur. I'm not uh, into music. So, um, you know, they, a speaker system is different than an amplifier, but I, yeah. I, I don't assume that they would ever need an amplifier, but I would assume that speakers are considered amplification. So that's yeah. why it was, that was applied for, but I would say, yeah, no, yeah. no I'm, I'm glad you checked that box off. Cause we've, that box is now there for a reason. It didn't used to be there. Right. So we can have this conversation. Um, Helen and Jennifer comments, questions. Yeah, I was just wanted clarification because I'm saying, is it really from Monday through Sunday, which essentially is every day of the week, right? From 10 a.m. to 12.30 a.m.? Is that what the it's not this, the, the purpose of putting all hours would be hours that we potentially could be operating. We're not, we're obviously only open Tuesdays um, through Sundays. We are looking to open for lunch. So that would be if we decided to do lunch, but it was really more of us just to have the, um, the ability as, as like our liquor license or our common victualler to operate within those hours um, that were already open. So essentially the only thing we ask is that they mirror whatever the common victualler's license is. So, I mean, if we need to amend that on the application, then we certainly can, but really realistically, we just want to be able to have the opportunity to book somebody at a time when we're are open. Right. Um, yeah. Cause of course, I mean, the concern I would have is sort of like, you know, 11 PM or, or midnight on a Wednesday night. Cause I don't, cause we don't know at this point, I guess what there are um, residences upstairs. Is that correct? Yeah. That yeah. There's some uh, there's some offices, but there's also uh, a penthouse upstairs. Right, and then I mean, do you foresee doing that, like having having potentially amplified music at say eleven thirty? Mm -hmm. Not not really, but Marty, um, Fat Tuesday is the only day that we're going to be doing something. Uh, right. Given the fact that you approve this, um, that's pretty much it during the week. Okay, yeah, because I mean, I sort of I I know that. I think I can speak for all of us when we sort of hate being big brother and saying like, you know, no, we're going to change the rules on you because we don't trust that you're going to do it right. We prefer that, you know, give leeway to the businesses and that and hope there's not an issue. But, you know, as Natasha brought up, we've had so many issues before, um, you know, in a place across the street that it was sort of like an endless issue. And I can't remember what exactly what time of night i can't remember also even what their entertainment license now says if there's sort of an earlier curfew um you know uh during the week uh, i think that they ended up doing significant sound mitigation right i know that yeah i can't remember if it was also if their entertainment license reads differently or, or I, is this for majestic yeah, yeah. my hunch is it's a broad set of hours because they're a bar i think so yeah and yeah. the other one was the license at um homestead prior to being homestead mm -hmm. there they were trying to do like a nightclub-y sort of thing at night and they also ended up doing some sound mitigation and then just sort of like ditching the music program altogether um but I recall the Majestic, the, the new uh, leadership at Majestic worked closely with the neighbors to come up with a comfortable place. Right. Definitely remember that. Um, so I guess I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, I <laughs> continue to be the bad guy, first of all, and <laughs> John, you're going to hate me by the end of this. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I would prefer to say, you know, that we can approve this, but please proceed with caution, you know, because none of us want to come back with us again and have to sort of figure out that, you know, there's, it's too loud at night and the neighbors are complaining, but you're going to be the first one to hear that. So, and we expect that then you'd make some kind of adjustments to, to mitigate that. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I want you to have the flexibility, John, to like build in some music programming um, but like Helen just said, you probably will hear from a neighbor. And so then the best, the better way, the best way for you to deal with that with us is for you to deal with it with the neighbor appropriately, <laughs> you know, and, um, and work with folks who, who, if they're having sound issues, and that might mean some mitigation, it might mean 
changing your style of music. It might mean not having it amplified, you know, you know, it'll, it'll have to get figured out. But what we don't want is it to come, have to come to us because then it's just unhappy people. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Jennifer, what are your thoughts? I, I want to give John a chance. I, you know, I agree with the, the desire to be flexible, to not limit the, the programming nights. I mean, I think that Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras is the perfect example. I, I don't think he's going to routinely have folks playing Wednesday nights. Yep. Um, but yeah, but let's give him a give him a shot. Okay. I agree. I guess I just wanted to say those things, but I'm not going right. to. Oh, well, we've learned the hard way with yeah. amplification. Yeah, so. we've, just, we've been so snake bit, I think. That, you know. We named a couple, John, and there's really more. I mean, we can keep going. Oh, yeah. The, it's several. Several. So it's, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, as far as what we're going to be doing, is it's really just jazz and blues. It's not, you know, there's no, there's never going to be a DJ here. I think that they, that somebody had suggested it, and they said, no, we're not doing that. I mean, the reality of it is we're here to make money. We're not here to have, be famous nightclub owners, you know what I mean? It's not any part of the agenda for us. It's more of just sure. a accompaniment to uh, the experience that you have when you're at a restaurant. Right. All right. Okay, Thank you. For a motion. All right, I'm doing it so that you'll like me again. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the amendment to an existing entertainment license held by Gombo Oyster Bar LLC as detailed in item nine on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Ellen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. All right, then, agenda number 12, approval of minutes. Do we have a motion for December 20th, 2023, and January 12th, 2024? It's all you, Jennifer. Sure, I'll put forward a motion to approve the minutes from December 20, 2023 and January 12, 2024. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Excellent, thank you. Clerk updates, open gov go live. Yeah, so on January 16th, we went live with open gov. Uh, licensing started first. It was just two record types. Um, so far, I only have one application, but it was, um, it's good. It's exciting. <laughs> Other than that, I don't have much, I don't have much to add to that. Um, the only other thing is um, the Calvin. There was nothing on the agenda tonight because the transfer application, the deadline is tomorrow. Um, so I guess we shall wait and see. Okay. Um, Chris, did you have, Andy, can you unmute Chris for a sec? Yes. Um, I'm wondering uh, with this, if, if, if we do, if we can expedite the process at all by calling a special meeting, uh, if that, is that possible? I am fine with a special meeting. Yeah. I just need one other commissioner to also be fine with a special meeting. Yeah, I'm very open to that. Under the, yeah. I mean, under these particular circumstances, I'm fine with it. There's some I'm not, but yeah, we would we would definitely consider that. Thanks. Yeah. I'll bring pizza. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell it already. <laughs> Randy. Oh, I think Randy has something to say too. Yep. Yes. Go ahead, Randy. Sorry. Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> yeah, just a quick one. Annie, if you could let me know what paperwork you need to be in your office tomorrow. I know you so, won't be in your office. I will not be in the office tomorrow. I will be on Thursday though. Um so yes. I just will let me know what paperwork it'll be there. Honestly, it's not going to be much because I already have most of it, but um, it's going to be after the meeting, I'll send you an email of the application you need to fill out. Great. Thank you. Okay. And then once, so there's, there needs to be a legal notice and then a butters notices. So, and then once that publishes and the notices are sent out, we can't have a meeting sooner than 10 days. So 
once that once the legal notice is published, then I'll be able to determine when the meeting, the special meeting can be. Then. Thank you. And, and even though we've gotten, we've done this once before, it has to be done again with the the legal notice and a butter's notice. Yeah, because it's a different application. Okay. Yeah. Just sorry. Hoping. Maybe I'll ask a third time. Just, you know, maybe. <laughs> And it's it's um special legislation too, so that needs to go into the notice and yeah. Well unless you more okay. All right. Um so Annie, did you you were just saying the deadline for the transfer application for Calvin is tomorrow? Yeah. And you'll update us accordingly. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, new business. Does anybody have any new business? Well, you know, no, me neither. Not new business. No. But I do want to thank you, Annie, for being on this call, despite being, you know, crawling out of your sick bed to be here. I mm -hmm. really appreciate it. <laughs> All you. for the love of the city, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, then I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn so Annie can go back to bed. Motion to adjourn. Second. And Natasha. Yes. Uh, Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Thank you all.